Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? The unit is a cleaning SAM. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify SAM. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for SAM to properly operate. Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's Choice. My pleasure, Captain. I need a little help with my calculus. Can you integrate my natural log? As you wish, Captain. I must comply with all direct orders. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Ah, uh, yes. As Dr. Wells is a wanted outlaw, he built his laboratory into an asteroid. Orbital destinations can be challenging to land on, his more so than most. There is a bounty on his head, one with a markedly high reward amount. Shall I engage the laser weapons system? A sensible choice, as we do not have any laser weapons. The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas V. Wells has taken a measure of precautions to make the lab undetectable to those hunting him. Even knowing the location, my systems 
resist my orders to go where I instruct them. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? We are clear to dock with the Groundbreaker, if that's your desired destination. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. Order does not compute. Nevertheless, I will endeavor to execute my current and future tasks without lip. The Groundbreaker was Halcyon's original colony ship. It has since been repurposed as a service station in the Lagrange point of the system. Freighters often deliver or pick up goods from the Groundbreaker en route to other destinations. The city ship hosts an array of cargo bays, factories, housing sections, and more. Many of Halcyon's companies maintain office spaces with stationed representatives in what is considered a truly neutral territory within the system. I have filed the required docking forms in triplicate, and fees have been paid. How can I be of assistance? I have lots of minutes. Many minutes. Unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. I prefer to think of it as being in a state of slumber perhaps for an indefinite duration of time. Do you think that is what it's like for the colonists on the Lost Hope? As the organics say, I wouldn't dream of it. Because I can't. Dream, you know. I can run repeating periods of altered consciousness during which several primary functions are powered down, but background processes continue running, for maintenance purposes. I cannot yet simulate images, ideas, emotions, or sensations during this maintenance. Captain Hawthorne suggested I would enjoy such an experience, and should periodically attempt the simulation. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute, I failed to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. How can I be... I request you do not wake me if I am sleeping upon your return.
Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy like, ain't it? Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. Okay, voice is back on. There we go. Reed seems to have it in for you. I'm not exactly a model employee. Not like you wanted. The kind that stays quiet and gets the right work done in the right order every day. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. This girl's got some issues with her dad. But you actually are good at this and you enjoy it? Why would people be unhappy about you getting a maintenance job? One aptitude test determines your whole life. Hmm. But you're actually pretty good at this and you enjoy it. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow and I've blown another deadline. Yep. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Huh. Everybody does when they're at school. Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big old hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. Oh. It's getting old. Did you get much time with him when you got back from school? About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. Oh, what do you think of the ship? That's in pretty good shape, considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA-120. A2 model, I'm pretty sure. Oh. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space, but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board certified mechanic. I like this computer, she's like, like she's cocky. So you're gonna call her it, not she? Though my voice is currently pitched to suggest female, I possess no gender. Any pronoun preferred by the user is acceptable. Hello, I am not a board certified mechanic. But my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not Moss. simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. <laughs> I, wasn't. I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. Cooking with plasma torches. My dad taught torches. me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Oh. I think it's time you move along. No, let's keep it for now. Break time's over. I like having her around. Let's look upstairs. Like the engine Captain, core or are something. Are you expertly versed in the internal workings of a spacefaring ship? If not, I must request you please back away from the primary engine. Huh, <laughs> nice. That's clever. Go up further. Let's find the vicar or whatever his name is. He's around here somewhere. Anything in the fridge? Oh, nice. What's 
Is that a radio? Can't do anything with it. Oh, somebody's room. Somebody else's room. Three rooms. Oh, they've all opened, okay. There we go. Oh, lots of books. These texts have been out of print for almost half a century. The margins are full of scribbled notes and many passages have been underlined. Some pages have loose are loose. The glue now yellowed and cracked along the spines. Doctrinal studies of equity and equations. The Journey of Maximilian de Soto, Volume 1. The scribbles on this journal page are utterly legible and anyone except Vicar... Oh, God, how do you say this guy's name? Vicar Maximilian de Soto. Lots of heavy ammo. Great. What's that thing? Examine. Smells especially like iceberg aged wi whiskey. Okay. Index of banned literature. Principles of restricted morals and maxims of banning and ethical literature. Proof of the grand architecture and predestination. Okay, cool. I like how they personalize everything. Sad. Examine. Toss ball trading cards. In mint condition, most of these cards represent players from the Hephaestus Hammers and the Tile Backers. Oh, this is like that sport game they play in this universe. It's the art and science of toss ball. Impossible to down. Order of a scientific inquiry. Huh. Let's see what he has to say. By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? I'd like to know something about those I'm flying with. What's your story? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Violently enthusiastic? Uh, that's what my parents called it. Hectic. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. The equation seems to be a religion in this world. Okay. Why were you so passionate about it? Yeah. My parents, ironically. Yeah. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith. A faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. Awesome. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. Hmm. Uh, then why were, but why weren't they proud of you? They thought I was fighting the plan. Should have accepted my lot. What's the plan? Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige. But that was not me. Oh, I thought so when I met you. What's this plan you keep talking about? The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, oh, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. If you can't help but follow the plan, but everything you do is part of it, right? Mm. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. Okay. Seems quite trusting of you just to sign up without knowing anything about me. I want to ask you about the book. Uh, any ideas? You can find someone who speaks French in this colony. Vicar, you're out of my crew. Oh, you have to be careful because you can kick them out without even thinking about it. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. 
This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. Seems a bit extreme. I've been called that more than once. What about you? What's your story? Oh. Oh, here we go. I'm a colonist of the hope. Oh, should we just go with it? I love a good adventure story. Oh. Yeah, I'm going with it. And how did he do that? Stole my body from the hope at the edge of the colony and thawed me out. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? I think that's hectic, this. I don't actually think he's going to help all the colonists, but we're going to try to. That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Oh, do I have family on the hope? Am I going that way? Mm. Yeah, let's say I've got family. Oh, I see. You have my condolences. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Uh, what's a Philosophist? Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to we be true. Like multiple they believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. Hectic. Any idea where we can find someone who speaks French? I've been thinking on that. There's a former associate. Uh, infamous philosopher oh, scholar see, who fled Terra 2 dude. some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. Super dodgy. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Okay, fair enough. Kind of sounds like a good lead, but how do we find him? That's a good question. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Okay, fair Great enough. place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Okay, cool. How will a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? Why is it that simple of a gap to be such a highly skilled hacker? Oh, that's a good question. Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. Uh. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Oh, there we go. Sounds good. Let's go. Hmm. How will a, school, a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. Sounds good, let's go. Thank you, Captain. Okay. I dig out that all the rooms like end up looking like their stuff. It's got a bit of a mass effect feel to it, this, which is really nice. I'm looking forward to something that goes well. Oh nice. There we go. Foxy comp aromatic. Look at that. Devil head. Don't know what that is. Oh there we go. So dead. A sterner older man with warm eyes. Yeah, I'm so dead. Hectic story, that. Ooh, it's a wrench. First wrench Dad ever gave me. She's been a friend ever since. Abigail the wrench, she names all her stuff. Banged up toolbox, full of modified tools with unique mechanical usages. Digging around in here would be an easy way to lose a finger to a sawtooth blade. Fair enough. Spade, man. Nah. Pills. This book. A modern steel wrench I knew. This book is heavily dog eared with doodles in the margins. Skin cell, oleo, oleo, toxin free. Plant. Petunia the plant. This is not a petunia. That's funny. It's my room around this. Oh, there we go. Oh, check this dude out. Sam. 
There's no response for an automatic mechanical unit. The serial number etched in its chassis includes the letters SAM. Okay, there's something she told me that I could do. Journal. Close the completed clean machine. You found a non-operational sanitation and maintenance auto mechanical on the reliable. If you can get it running up, it might prove useful. Search Hawthorne's terminal. That was it. Okay. Gotta find Hawthorne's terminal. I think it's in here. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. Adolescent researchers dreamed of an independent life without Ford oversight. He taught them in a Ford lesson. Never dream. That's so hectic. There's a terminal I've got to read. What's that? This is like story. It's a bit not. Okay. Let's see. Welcome, Captain. Messages for Alex Hawthorne. Unread messages. From you, Bedford. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to mention that my previous message, silly me, I'm mailing you a copy of my favorite serial, The Space Adventures of the Singularity Steel. It's about a dashing space pirate with a heart of well steel. It's not exactly board approved, so don't go showing it around your s to your spacer buddies. I hope it will amuse you while you're out adventuring. Me similarities to a certain someone are entirely intentional. Oh, okay. Archive messages. Oh, wow. Bedford. Dearest Alex. Can't tell you how pleased I'm finally hear you. Your message is hilarious. I'm delighted by your sense of humor and the tale of your hijinks. Hope your terminal will cooperate for the seeable future. By the way, I was scraping Groundbreakers comms network for tasty little tidbits and I noticed you declined to dock at Edgewater's landing pad instead touching down in the wilderness. You rugged individualist you. I only pray that idiot Tobson wasn't giving you any trouble. Anyway, I hope your meeting down on Terra 2 provides fruitful and I look forward to corresponding with you in greater regularity your best friend Udom hello hello Alex I don't know where you were raised but I hazard to guess it may have been a barn because anyone with even a modicum of decent rearing would know it's unforgivably rude to ignore the ardent sincere messages of one's friends please respond dear Alex hello hello I hope this finds you well it was a pleasure to see you in my office again last week once again, I'm terribly sorry about the impounding mix-up. How could it have happened a second time? Terminals these days, I swear. Dreadfully unreliable. Ah, just look like your ship. I hope you've given some thought to that thing we discussed. You know about the Wills fellow. I'm so sorry to press, but I have the strongest tickling feeling that you really do know him. And if I could just tell me where he is, well, I would be, be marvellous for our friendship, wouldn't it? Looking forward to seeing you again, wingman. Interesting. Dear Alex, hello Udom here, yeah. Udom Bedford. We met when I accidentally impounded your ship. My silly fat finger is embarrassing me once again. I hope it wasn't too terribly inconvenient for you. It was such a pleasure for me. And I tremendously appreciate your forbearance in not throttling me. You really are quite the gentleman. If you've ever in Groundbreakers airspace or space space, please don't hesitate to look me up. The Lost Hope serves Spectrum Vodka. Perhaps we could try every color, you know, really tie one on. Let me know, your friend Udom. Okay, sent messages. None. Oh, there we go. Look, there's no call for shouting. My terminal was busted, had a few too many, and I've knocked it off the desk. You know how it is. Sometimes you just got to cut loose. I'm not telling you where Wells is, so lay off. Buy me a drink at the last hope next time I'm in, and I might forgive you. Okay, logs. Captain's note. Shrink ray. Note to self, remember this later. No better, Ada. Remind me weekly to check this log until I tell you to stop. Yes, I mean continually. No, Ada. Not if I'm dead. Would, why would you even ask me that? Back to my point. I saw in actuality that my, with my own two eyes, a sublimely powerful weapon in Wells' lab just sitting there for the taking. If the grey hair was to look away to forget about it, maybe. Or if I had to ask a smidgen more nicely. He called it a shrink ray, but he wouldn't let me test that claim after I lost my temper. 
said he was inspired to create the thing by the achievements of other scientists who dared to push the boundaries of human knowledge and decency laws. I'd heard rumors of fantastical weapons like this one, weapons that push the boundaries of the mind and the science cutting edge, but I figured they were just stories. To be honest, laying eyes on well shrink ray firsthand is enough to make a fellow wonder if there's more to rumors, more to be had. Hammer power. Number two. The last time I got sloshed, I mean, was imbibing at the last hope on the groundbreaker. Look, Udon was really free with the drinks and he seemed like an okay fellow. I shamelessly but subtly eavesdropped on two murdets yammering on about a mad scientist some years back who claimed to have made a huge discovery that would change the fate of the colony, like none of us had heard that one before. But here is the good part. The mardets said the mad scientist kept yelling about the hammer's power or something similar. A strange weapon with a special power created by a crazy lab coat. Sure it fits the bill. It could be another one of the weapons that inspired Wells. Black market leads. Oh, it's a long one. Number three, black markets. Why, why, why wasn't, won't Wells just give the shrink ray to me? Blast him to the depths of the labyrinth on Tartus and back. Let the record show I did apologize for shouting him down five times, but architect be damned. It's just sitting there, neglected and gathering dust. I should have commandeered it and thanked him without asking permission or breaking expensive equipment when he said it wasn't ready yet and that even if it were, he couldn't entrust to me someone like me. What does that even mean, I ask? That I'm not trustworthy enough? That I'd used to wipe out a good, hard-working folk of the colony like some sort of moralist psycho? I'll admit to maintaining some questionable associates, associations, but I follow a strict code of, of me, myself and mine. What's not to respect in that, exactly? Now I have to wait until Wes Wells forgets or thinks he's misplaced it. In the meanwhile, I've been tracking down additional rumors pertaining to others of these science weapons through Halcyon. If gossip holds true, my next step will be to check with the black market merchants on the Groundbreaker and in Fallsbrook. Okay. Search term Sam. Oh, first Sam result. Do not forget, you found a discarded sanitation and maintenance auto mechanical and emerald veil scrap heap during your last job. It should not be too difficult to get it up and running. With a few key modifications, I can envision a combat capable variant. Some might say a clean, mean killing machine. Oh, that's super lame. Removal of factory standard parts, suds steep, steeper, was successful. Delivery of combat modified replacement part, acid steeper, has been deployed. Progress setback is estimated now to be a solid three months. Not like I've had more pressing matters to attend, but ah, oh, but it'll do. I'm giving up hope on the delivery. The part is lost in transit and it's not turning up at any time soon. But good news. I heard from a fellow who knows a gal who knows the broker who overcharged me for the information regarding the location of an acid steeper. I can uh, flitch. The part was sent to an old storage facility in Roseway. I sure never thought I'd go back to that pit. Good thing Auntie abandoned it years ago. I'll pick it up following this next pit stop, back to Emerald Vale. Wells wants me to chaperone some person of interest. Details to come later. So that was me, and then I landed on his head. Great. Okay, so now I've got to get science weapons. spoken to everybody what's in here oh this is the way out okay welcome back so. captain thanks how Ada. can i uh no nothing for mm -hmm. now she isn't here navigation unreliable navigation terminal use the system map to travel to planets asteroids and labs in the halcyon system Toggle in active quests. Oh, there. Okay. Here's the groundbreaker. Where are we? Terra 2. Ah, uh, cool, man. A delict terrestrial planet. Halcyon's wealthiest elite live in this capital city. Byzantium. Oh, that's like old Turkey. It's interesting. While the colony's lab laborers live in a corporate owned township along the frontier. Monarch, one of the Olympus's many satellites, 
what should have been Halcyon's second habitable world has long since been abandoned by the poor due to monstrous ravenous creatures. Hectic. Skilla. It's one of the largest asteroids orbiting Halcyon. The largest in a group of rocks known as the Chardis Cluster. Yeah, sorry for the pronunciations. Okay. Groundbreaker. Phineas's lab. Hmm. Okay, cool. So what do I need to do? So it's empty man. This is Roseway, okay. Weapons from the void. Okay, so Phineas also has a powerful weapon. Interesting stuff. Should we go to Phineas's lab? Document. Now arriving at Phineas's top secret orbital lab. Welcome back, Captain. May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. Thank you. You're weird. I dig this luck. I am. Sure. Oh, I can shoot it with me. Up to two. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Phineas's improved science lab. Twelve. <coughs> uh, hello? Oh. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Does this work? Oh, damn it! Blast that's loud! Okay. Oh. So that's my ship. What's over here? Terrible people, I just want to investigate everything. Examine, inspect immediately. Okay, Finn, no idea what you will need damn things for, but the supplies is hiking up the prices. Expect more increases in the future. Before you ask, there's no rebate for order in bulk. Next delivery in four weeks, and let's say otherwise in three. Three, you hear? You end up with pigs stacked to the rafters again. It's not my friggin' problem. Looking into the flux thing, but no hits yet. Sent along the greeting card for other dear auntie. Don't tell me what you want for it. Don't want to know. Oh. Guys must let me know if you want me to read all this stuff. experiments and securing myself okay guys it looks like that's it for now I'm gonna save it up a man has two bosses in his life one gives him a salary and one spends it and the one that spends it is calling me so thanks for watching hopefully see you all again in the near future bye for now